good day everyone. So you are enrolled in uh, practical research 2. No? So uh, of course uh, education should be continued even we are in pag pandemic times no so since this is our first lesson so let me introduce to you the the subject so our subject title is practical research 2 subject description this course develops critical thinking and problem solving skills through quantitative research. No? So that is the subject description of practical research too. Then uh, the content is uh, nature of inquiry and research. The content is standard the characteristics strengths and kinds of quantitative research then of course at the end of this uh, subject or lesson so you will be able to describe characteristics strengths weaknesses and kinds of quantitative research so this is our uh, lesson code for this So, characteristics of quantitative research. Quantitative research methods emphasize objective measurements and the statistical, mathematical, or numerical analysis of data collected through pools, questionnaires, surveys, or by manipulating pre-existing statistical data using computational techniques. No? So, Ang emphasis nito o yung DNA nito ay yung mga measurements and statistical, uh, mathem mathematical, and numerical analysis na galing doon sa ating mga collected data. No? And uh, yung mga data na yan ay pwede nating makuha sa pamagitan ng mga pools, questionnaires, and surveys. Quantitative research focuses on gathering numerical data and generalizing it across groups of people or to explain a particular phenomenon. The final written report has a set of structure consisting of introduction, literature, and theory methods, results, and discussion. So, at the end of this uh, subject, of course, ang pinaka-final output natin is a quantitative research, no? At yan ay uh, binubuo ng introduction, literature, theory, methods, results, and discussion. So, your goal in conducting quantitative research study is to determine the relationship between one thing and another with a population. Quantitative research designs are either descriptive or experimental. A descriptive study establishes only association between variables. Then, an experimental study establishes causality. Sa descriptive, titingnan lang natin ano yung kaugnayan ng bawat variables natin. Doon sa experimental study naman, i-establish natin ano yung dahilan ng isang phenomenon. Quantitative research deals in numbers, logic, and an objective stance. Quantitative research focuses on numeric and unchanging data and detail convergent reasoning rather than divergent reasoning. So, pag sinabi natin quantitative research, of course, naandyan yung numbers. Yan ang pag-uusapan natin dyan. Ano yung mga logic ng, uh, ng mga numbers na yan? Ano yung pinapakita? Ano ang ipinapahiwati? And, of course, 
yung mga numbers na yan ay yung mga unchanging data and detailed. So, halimbawa, ang kinuha nating data ay uh, performance, no? Uh, performance ng mga estudyante sa so, pamagitan ng kanilang final exam. Of course, the result of final exam is unchanging data. Hindi siya nababago, no? Kung ano yung nakuha na result. So, that is... Uh, the data na makukuha natin at hindi natin pwedeng baguhin, itaas o ibaba. May mga characteristics yung uh, quantitative research. Una, the data is usually gathered using structured research instruments. So, kinakailangan natin ng isang structured research instrument. So, nabanggit natin kanina, pwede tayong gumamit ng mga questionnaires no sa sa pagkuha ng mga data na yan the results are based on larger sample sizes that are representative of the population let's say for example isang barangay kukunin natin ang ang data ng isang barangay so so po, pwede natin siyang i-represent yung buong barangay na yan sa pamamagitan ng isang larger sample size And of course, ang statistician ay mayroong uh, formula on how to compute the sample size. The research, is, research study can usually be replic replicated or repeated given its high reliability. So, pwede natin siyang uh, ulitin no? para nang sa ganon ay maging mas re reliable yung magiging result ng ating study. The researcher has a clearly defined research question to which objective answers are sought. So, dapat daw ay malinaw yung uh, research question na gagawin ng ating researcher. Para nang sa ganun ay makuha natin kung ano ba talaga yung tamang sagot doon sa ating gustong malaman sa ating kinakandak na research. All aspects of the study are carefully designed before data is collected. So, kinakailangan nating planuhin. We have to carefully design uh, the, uh, the all aspects of the study no? bago tayo mag-proceed doon sa pangungolekta ng data. Hindi yung naandyan na agad yung data kinuha na natin yung data, hindi pa natin naaayos o napaplano kung paano natin ikakandak yung ating uh, research no? o study. Data are in form of numbers and statistics, often arranged in tables, charts, figures, or other non-textual forms. So, padalasan natin nakikita yan na doon sa mga discussions ng mga studies ay pinipresent no, yung resulta ng, ng study sa pamagitan ng mga paggamit ng tables, ng charts, ng figures, at ng iba pang mga non-textual forms. Then, project can, project can be used to generalize concepts more widely, predict future results, and investigate causal relationships. No, so, pag-aaralan natin yung cause and effect. No? Uh, ano ba yung dahilan ng isang phenomenon? Bakit nangyayari yun? So, ano yung nagiging cause? Ano yung nagiging dahilan? The, res the researcher use, uses tools such as questionnaires or computer software to collect numerical data. So, syempre, uh, as researcher, gagamit tayo ng mga tools, no? o kaya ay mga computer software, o kaya ay mga questionnaires in order to gather our data. So, of course, uh, quantitative research uh, has aim and that is to classify features, count them, and construct statistical models. And that statistical models will help us to explain yung ating mga observation during the conduct of our study. So, we have to keep in mind when reporting the results of study using 
quantitative methods this uh, following no number one we have to explain the data collected and their statistical treatment as well as relevant results all relevant results in relation to research problem you are investigating so we have to explain the data collected no? yung mga nakuha nating nagather nating data so we have to explain no? at gagamit tayo of course na mga statistical treatment at uh, ipapakita natin no? i-explain natin sa ating mga readers lahat ng mga relevant results in relation to the research problem ng ating study na ini-investigate. Report unanticipated events that occur during your data collection. So, we have to report all anticipated events. Let's say, for example, uh, nawala yung ating record. So, we have to uh, report. No, We have to explain how the actual analysis differs from planned analysis. So, let's say, uh, Sabi natin kanina, we have to to plan all aspects of this study. No? Pero doon sa habang kinakandak natin yung study, nagkaroon ng kaunting pagbabago. So, doon sa actual analysis natin, so we have to uh, explain no? so what will happen no? at nagkaroon ng pagbabago at naging iba kesa doon sa planned analysis natin. Then explain your handling of mis missing data and why any missing data does not undermine the validity of your analysis. Of course, kung na, nawala yung ating mga data o ilan sa ating mga data na kinolekta, kinakailangan natin explain bakit nawala no? in order to uh, to explain to our readers na it's not intentional. No? Uh, hindi siya intention na wala in para nang sa ganun ay ma-manipulate your result. And we have also to explain to them or doon sa ating write-ups na itong pagkawala na ilang mga data ay hindi naman maapektuhan yung validity of your analysis. So, explain the techniques you use to clean your data set. Then choose a minimally sufficient statistical procedure, provide a rationale for its use and reference for it, specify any computer program. So kung mayroon tayong mga ginamit na computer programs, kinakailangan natin ilahad dyan doon sa ating gagawing study kung ano yung mga computer programs na yan. Then, uh, we have to describe the assumption for its procedure and the steps you took to ensure that they were not violated. So, kinakailangan nating i-explain niya, no? Yung, yung mga assumption natin sa bawat procedure. When using inferential statistics, provide the descriptive statistics. Confidence intervals and sample sizes for its variable as well as the value of the test statistic. Its direction, the degrees of freedom, and the significance level. Kapag sinabi natin inferential statistics, ang ibig sabihin niya ng inferential statistics, uh, halimbawa, you are trying to, to reach conclusion that extend beyond the immediate data uh, alone or like for example we use inferential statistics to try to infer from the sample data what the population might think or let's say uh, we want to know uh, the reason or uh, the reason why this course, uh, let's say for example, mayroon tayong binigay, mayroon sa examination, no? mas mataas ang nakukuha ng mga babae kaysa sa mga lalaki. So, ano yung, gusto nating malaman, ano yung uh, 
o bakit nagkakaiba yung result no nung sa babae at sa lalaki bakit mas mataas yung isa isang group at bakit mas mababa yung isang group so that is inferential statistics then ab avoid inferring causality particularly in non randomized design or without further experimentation so hindi dapat natin daw i-infer yung yung ko ano ba yung dahilan ng isang phenomenon no lalo na kung yan ay hindi naman randomized kaya ay wala namang ginawang experimentation before or hindi naman tayo gagawa ng experimentation doon sa ating study then use tables to provide exact values use figures to convey global effects keep figures small in size include graphing representation by confidence uh, representations of confidence intervals whenever possible so kinakailangan sabi nga natin kanina ang, ang presentation kadalasan sa quantitative research ay sa pamamagitan ng mga tables and figures so kinakailangan nating gumamit niyan na in order to present all exact values na ginamit natin doon sa ating study. Then always tell the reader what to look for in tables and figures. After natin ilagay ang mga tables na yan, mga figures na yan, we have to explain sa ating mga reader ano ba yung tables na yan at ano ba yung mga nasa figures na yan. So, dapat din nating tandaan when using pre-existing statistical data gathered and made available by anyone other than yourself, you still must report on the methods that were used to gather the data and describe any missing data that exists and if there is any provide a clear explanation why the missing data does not undermine the validity of your final analysis. So, kinakailangan natin uh, i-report, kinakailangan natin i-discuss no? yung mga pre-existing statistical data na nakuha natin, na kinuha natin sa mga agency, o kaya ay papaano nila nagather yung papaano nagather yung mga statistical data na yon no at uh, kung halimbawa ay may mga nawalang data galing sa mga uh, government agencies na yan na atin pinagkunan ano ang kailangan nating i-explain kung papaano hindi ito makakaapekto doon sa validity of your final analysis. So, so far, uh, yan muna ang ating discussion sa session na ito. Then, next uh, videos, uh, we will discuss uh, deeper the uh, different aspects or uh, lessons about quantitative research. So, in the meantime, so, uh, keep safe and uh, always uh,